one of the most famous waters on the international carp scene. You're talking literally hundreds of 60 pounders in here. I wouldn't like to say how many 70s are in here or 80s, but you know, it's a massive head of fish, and obviously, that's a, a big plus point for a lot of people that come here. All fishing is like a puzzle, and rainbow is like the most complicated puzzle. Each swim is like, um, it's like, I don't know, it's like a th to try and 3D map it in your head is almost impossible. Loads of bays, loads of channels, loads of ups and downs, and, lots of, and indeed an awful lot of snags as well. It's just exciting fishing and a great place to be. Like most carp anglers, I've grown up hearing the name Rainbow. Over the years, many of my friends have visited there, returning with tales of these incredible big carp, but also the extreme nature of the fishing at this unique and challenging lake, Part of me has always wanted to go and experience the challenge of Rainbow for myself. So when the opportunity of a trip there with venue regular and experienced big fish angler Simon Crow came up at short notice, it was a door too inviting not to walk through. Yeah, we've got peg six. Um, I don't actually know a great deal about this actual peg, but I do know that this, this last week or so he's done a couple of good big, big fish, a couple of 30 kilo fish. So it's looking good for it. There's a lot of options out there. It looks like we could fill the swim with about 30 rods, but Somehow we've got to try and narrow it down to just using four rods each. But um, yeah, conditions look good, weather's good. We're all set up and this is the, the time when you sort of, you've been building up to the drive, the packing of the gear, getting everything ready. We're almost now settled in the swim. We've just got the rods to put out. So that's the next stop. Although it was Crowey's 10th trip to the lake, Swim 6 wasn't one that he'd fished before, so it was new to both of us. After setting up camp, we spent the day out in the boats investigating the swim, choosing spots and preparing the tackle. We're coming up over the bar, really shallow on top, three feet at its peak and then straight back down. I think I've got four spots now. first day passed without event. Prepared to play the long game, I wasn't really expecting to catch anything early in the trip, so I was almost in disbelief when one of my rods sprang into life just on last light. Really great in on stomach. I took to the boat to do battle with my first rainbow carp, followed by Sai, who captured the battle on camera. What a do, dude. Not bad one. Both of us being out in the boat with an angry common charging about below was surely causing quite a disturbance. Just wants to sit under the boat. However, the carp in another part of the swim was still feeding. Oh, got a bite on the other rod. Yeah, that one's on the end as well, Ty. Si. It's the bottle bobbing. Yeah. We'll wait for it, mate. Get that one in the net first. And Ollie's just had a double take, playing a fish. And there you go, it's going. And so is Ollie. <laughs> Can you believe it? Double take. In there, Oliver. Oh. He's on the bow. Oh, look at that, mate. that looks a good fish, mate. A really good fish. <laughs> That's awesome. What a cracking brace of fish, mate. That's a nice one, mate. That is. 
we were having a lovely relaxing afternoon. Today was no filming, it was the day of recovery. Plenty of show, and look at that, that's a beast, it's mate. A donkey, mate. That's a donkey, a that's a big old lump, mate. Oh, a good <laughs> way. what a way to start. Look at the size of that. Yeah, that is a big lump. Get in there! <laughs> God, look at that fog in it. Easy, mate, it's easy 60. Alright, oh, let's get back to that. Yeah. Right, a last light. It's all zero, I zeroed it earlier. Really. Easily a 40, that is. Oh, he's over 40. 4212. First rainbow carp. <laughs> awesome stuff. Great start, mate. I was over the moon with my first rainbow carp, and as if catching a 4212 common so early in the trip wasn't enough, the next one really was something a bit special. Just a touch under 30 kilos. That's good enough though, mate, that is. That's yes, sorry. What a start, mate. <laughs> what a start, man. What a start. Second day. Holds up two absolutely gorgeous fish. Oh, that's a good start. Yeah, that's good. 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 It was an absolute monster of a carp, tipping the scales around to 65 pound 12 ounces, or just shy of 30 kilos. The size 2 Fang X looked tiny in its massive gob. The weight came from the width. You really could have put a saddle on it but for such a big fish, it was immaculate too, with a perfect mouth and not a scale out of place. Oh, let's get him back. Such a big fish. Oh, mate. Back's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it really was a dream come true to bag a rainbow giant for myself, and I couldn't have asked for a better person to share that moment with than Crowy. Well, this morning started with a, a mad old squall and right in the middle of it, uh, right at first light, one of me, uh, well, I've only had, got two rods still out and one of them's gone off. And um, we've had a 40 and a 60, and I think this one might be somewhere in between. Another big one, so let's have a look. It's a big one, Si. <laughs> I didn't realise quite how big until I had to carry it, but yeah. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. It's just short of 60, mate. Literally two ounces short of 60. 59, 14. Another good one, mate. <laughs> Another big in. Another yes, big in, dude. Thanks, Rainbow. Another big in. Thank you, Si. Well done, mate. He's a giant, man. That's why we come to Rainbow. Despite the early action in the week, the fishing was slow for the next couple of days. The temperature had dropped and signs of fish were scarce. All we could do was keep our eyes on the water, ring the changes and make sure the rods were always fishing. We were sure they would soon show up again.
Well, it's a feature filled water of about 100 acres, and if you take an aerial view of the water, you can see how many different features that make up the uh, the lake itself because there's literally hundreds of small islands and every swim that's on this water is, is packed with features and at the moment there's 12 different swims that are allowed to be fished by anglers and the lake is fished 365 days a year by some really capable carp anglers so the fish that are in here are pressured throughout the year they know what bait and rigs are um, you know but uh, it's the anglers really that uh, have, have sort of made rainbow into what it is but it's been on the carp scene probably nearly 30 years now and my earliest memory of, of Rainbow Lake was the early issues of Carp Talk in the early 1990s when there was an advert run by, I think his name was John Stent, a guy who used to run the fishing at Farlows and he started doing trips over here. There wasn't really big fishing here then, there was carp to sort of low 40s but it was starting to sort of run commercial trips for British anglers which in those days there wasn't many venues that did them so it was quite uh, a prominent advert that was taken in the mag and so over the years we've had two world records that's been taken from Rainbow Lake. One was a fish known as Cuttail which first broke the world record about 15 years ago now by a gentleman called Graham Slaughter when it weighed 86 pounds but when that one passed away there was new fish coming through the ranks and the most famous fish really in here was one that's called the Steve Briggs fish which about 12 13 years or so ago, uh, Martin Lock caught in the depths of winter at 94 pounds, and it was his only carp caught during the week. It's a lovely place to be as well as you've seen this week, mate. It's not just about the extreme fishing and the size of the fish that's in here that, that attracts you to this venue, it's actually just being here. Every time I come here every year, I really look forward to, to having a session on this venue because it's just exciting fishing and, and a great place to be. The walls are just festooned some of the big carp that have been caught at Rainbow. Yeah, more Rainbow Whackers. Some uh, iconic pictures. Some great anglers have fished here. Okay, so also in the uh, lodge we have a really nice shower and toilet block, which I'm gonna take advantage of now. Well that was really terrible timing, while well, I've been for a shower, just had a text off Crowey and he's got two in the net, <laughs> how's your luck, so I've missed filming them. Let's get back and see what he's got eh. Doesn't matter. How heavy they are if you've been sitting there blanket. Let's put a smile on my face. We can try. Bigger ones to come, hopefully. Yep, definitely. Missed all the action. Missed it all, mate. Can't believe it. It's all right, though. I'm glad you did, because we ended up going for the other line. <laughs> <laughs> Two mirrors in quick succession for sight highlighted the return of some fish into the zone. Though the action was fairly consistent, it was by no means prolific. However, we did manage to begin to slowly unlock the puzzle, repositioning rods, trying new spots and reacting to any signs of fish. Well, it's fizzing on my bottle. Um, I'm going to shift one of the rods to, to an area that's quite snaggy over the back there.
In many ways, Rainbow Lake is looked at in an extreme way by carp anglers because of the methods that are used on the water. Um, if you only fish a, a small one acre pit in England where it's, it's got no snags or no features other than it's just an open piece of water, then you're going to look at the methods that Rainbow has been a little bit extreme. But you've only got to take a look at the fish and see the condition that the carp are in. They're in absolutely pristine condition. Mm. You know, but the fishing is um, a little bit sort of different to what you'd see on most other waters because of the nature of the lake, because there's so many different features in here. We fish with bottles uh, to keep the line off the bottom, and um, you know that's you don't really see that that method on anywhere other than sort of the old continental lakes like Cashin and stuff, where there's lots of snags on the bottom. You do need to fish around trees and, and over the top of islands because there's so many different pieces of um, broken up water on this water. If you take a look at it from Google Earth and and see how many islands there are, it's, it's just feature packed and you do need to think outside the box on this venue and the people that do fish here do that but it's it's fished in a really safe manner and you know if you're using the, the bottle method you know a lot of the time the fish just think there's a, a bit of pressure above them so they don't go charging through the snags if you try and bring them in from the bank and, and put pressure on one side then they obviously go against the pressure and they will charge through the snags but you go out to these bottles in the boat and the fish doesn't really move a great deal at all. It's literally just below the bottle and you know you can just take up the battle from there. Probably millions of carp like this in this lake. This sort of size. I mean if you look around the lake you can see it's vastly different to most lakes that you fish and you know as a result of that I've got really strong gear on and I've got size 2 twister hooks on I've got armor link which is a really strong hook link and I've got really beefed up gear as well I've got 60 pound leaders on I've got a mono leader that's probably about 30 meters and then I've got bullet brace straight through to the wheel so it's pretty heavy gear but it's to combat the snags and combat the features that are out there one thing that's worth mentioning is the leads that I'm using because at the moment I've got uh, anything from an 8 ounce uh, up to a 12 ounce lead depending on how far out I'm fishing and the reason for that is not only are the carp massive in here compared to English waters and you've also got sort of quite strong weather conditions uh, for this far down south seriously it can start moving your leads about quite easily so I like to use a 12 ounce lead soon on the rods that are way out at sort of 150 plus yards the other stuff that I've got that's I suppose a little bit different to how I'd fish in England is, is my rod setups. You know, everybody does it differently. I like to bring single rod bank sticks uh, to put my rods on and I generally sort of point the rods in the direction of where the leads are. And, and as you can see as well, I've got the, the new wasp indicators which are absolutely perfect for fishing really heavy leads. One of my rods is probably 150 metres out and you know when a, a fish picks up that lead I want to know that something's on the end of it as soon as possible and the wasp indicators are great for picking up that line you know certainly when you crank it up to full tension they are uh, i've brought a mixture of baits really i've um, i've brought some boilies i've brought some 20 mil scopex squids which you know for 25 30 years now that bait has caught hundreds of carp from around the world so i've got immense confidence in it certainly on my continental fishing i have i know it works well on this lake and I've also brought some party mix as well, a little bit of seed and a few tiger nuts as well because at the moment, as we've seen this week, you know, the fish can be a little bit finicky with the boilies. So it's, it's always worth bringing a little bit of a combination of everything. So as we came towards the end of the week, the action had quietened down somewhat for me. But since ringing a few changes, so I had managed to keep consistently catching, keeping us both busy. On the final afternoon, he was rewarded with another rainbow carp and his biggest of the trip yet. Oh, it's going into the bay, so. Well, that was rather out of blue. Over 45, 
if it's my last one, that's a really nice fish to finish with. Yeah, a really nice one, so beautiful. It's been um, it's been a good week, hasn't it? First half of the week, you you got that like really doof, 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 bang 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 with the biggins, yeah. and it's really slowed down for you this the second half, and then it's it's sort of changed for me, hasn't it? I've, I've, I've sort of slowed right off at the beginning, didn't catch anything and, until halfway through the trip, and then you know I came here with a preconceived idea that I was going to leave my rods out all week until they went and hopefully there was going to be a big one on the ends but I've not been able to do that because I've watched you fishing like that and I thought right you know and I think that's what sort of changed my approach to it is watching you the first half because you didn't fish it rainbow style you came in and fished it ollie style which was this short session approach of right fishing for a bite at a time mm. watching you this week I've reverted back to dashing style, about and yeah. changing everything and that's what I've done and I've changed anything but it's got it's got me bites yeah for sure it has worked I think ringing the changes for you you needed to do it you, you knew you needed to do it and it's brought it's brought quite a few bites isn't it in the end yeah, like, it does, yeah. Yeah. yesterday was quite a busy day yeah. I mean I said to you at the beginning of the week so that I probably wouldn't want to come back to Rainbow you know it's not my style to keep going back to the same place but yeah. I might not want to fish in the same swim again, I would, but... It's got you, hasn't it? The rainbow it has, bug's yeah, got you. Yeah, <laughs> it it is, does, mate. It just does. It, it gets to you this lake, does mate. It gets under your skin. And, and I know plenty of guys that have come here for the first time and they, they're itching to get back here for another go. And it is one of those waters that yeah, for sure. has got that addictive nature about it. It's mm. so beautiful as well, you know, one of the most amazing looking lakes, prehistoric almost, you know. Yeah. When the mist rises in the morning off the water. And, oh and you see them lumps just poking their heads out and you say, any minute now, any minute now. And um, you know, that we, when, when that buzzer goes, it is just incredible, it really yeah. is. Special place. But yeah, it's been great, mate, so enjoyed it so far. Let's see if we're, uh, we're gonna get lucky in these last few hours, eh? Fingers crossed, Craig. Fingers crossed, mate. You're right. Yeah, man. <laughs> Tired. Yeah, I'll bet you are, mate. Yeah, typically before we've got a long drive home, we've ended up with a load of night bites. Uh, we've had hardly any action at all during darkness whilst we've been here. And last night we had four bites before first light this morning. So pretty tired, but some good fish to weigh in as well, mate. So really happy as well. Yeah, I've got a decent 30 pounder by the looks of things to fill in that gap. And yeah. Well, Crowy's got a real month in man. Yeah, I'm happy. What you've been really waiting chuffed. for all week. Yeah, chuffed, mate. Really nice end to the session, mate. So <laughs> let's have a look at him, shall we? I was just going to weigh him in and see what he's uh, what he's weighing. Oh, he's a monster. Sorry. Sixty, sixty-one. Sixty-one? Sixty-one, mate, yeah. Nice fish to end the session. Oof. It's been a tough session to start with for me. Didn't have many fish at all for the first two or three days. And then uh, the last 48 hours really just sort of kicked off for me. Had some quality fishing. Top by this one, this morning, at 61. These are the sort of fish you come to Rainbow Lake for. There's some massive carp in here. And it truly is an awesome venue. Okay, Simon. Lovely, mate. Let's get her back. Rainbow 60. 